Shut up and sit down. Welcome into another Red Out podcast. I'm Jake. How's it going, Devin? Hey, it's going good, guys. Uh, nice, cool fall day here Absolutely. at the Red Out Studios. Uh, yeah, we got uh, Jared. Now let me. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try your last name again. I Rajesh, was, right? I was. I was thinking. Of, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's was, Big Bang. I know. I'm I was. Kidding. I was thinking about it on the way here. So it's Ross Dusher, right? You are Ross Dutcher. <laughs> Maybe. My Did clothes. we lose you? I, I I made him so I made him mad. I think we lost him. I think I made him mad. Still, since he's recording, give him another call. Hold on a second. Jared Ross Dusher. Oh, we lost him. He hung up on us. All right. Because I, yeah. Because I mispronounced his name. That's what it was. Gosh, it Jake. Was. How many times do we have to lose people? Absolutely. <laughs> you know. It's one okay. of those things, man. It's one of those things. Hey, Jared. There we go. There we go. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so Good old Jake is Wi-Fi coming in clutch. Yes, you gotta love it. Um, That's what I had to do last time. Hold on, oh, okay. We are having technical difficulties here at the Red Hot Studios. No, 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 no. We're just. Uh, I had to do this with Ross too. I've got you on my phone now, so we're good. Right. Um, so Jake was trying to pronounce your name. Yes, I did hear that, and he was correct. Yes, Ross Dusch. Ross Dusch. Ross sure. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I feel so dirty when I say it. I know. <laughs> okay, let's kick it off with uh, winners and losers nationally. Um, the biggest thing, I guess, is Jeff Braun beating Ohio State. That was my winner as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of everybody. Jared, was that yours as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, beating Ohio State when you're Purdue will definitely solidify your <laughs> coaching status for as long as you want to be there, pretty much. That's Unless you just take the next few seasons. But if you beat Ohio State, hey, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I completely agree. You you beat Ohio State, it goes on your resume, and it works for the next team that's probably going to hire you. <clears throat> Do you have a loser nationally? Nationally? Um, well, one of my other losers is Wisconsin, not necessarily because they lost, because they actually beat uh, Illinois 49-20. Uh, to 20. But Wisconsin dropped to number 20 since we played them the first of the year. Mm. Love it. I hate Wisconsin, sorry. So um, my, my loser was, was Purdue. How are they losers? Because of Bobby Because, because Jeff, Jeff Brown did so well, he's going to dip out. <laughs> that's right. Um, I mean, and that's just a feather in your cap as far as that goes. You are just, you can just walk off and go, yeah. Pay me that $5 million. And Louisville, if they could find reasons, rumors abound, yeah. uh, to fire Jeff, uh, not Jeff, <laughs> Bobby, um, then that's five mil they can afford. Yeah, per year. Plus um, a buyout. Plus what his, about you, Jared? Who are your winners and losers nationally? Uh, winner was definitely Purdue. Loser, I mean, I kind of agree with Wisconsin. Like, they had such high expectations at the beginning of the years. But it's actually opposite. Instead of, like, doing well the entire regular season and then losing in the Big Ten Championship by an infinite amount of points, they decided yeah. to just go ahead and kind of lose at the beginning of the year. So, I don't know how they'll end up, but, I mean, they're definitely going downhill very fast. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, and it's, it's not a very prolific conference to be in, uh, it's not an ACC or SEC for sure, and if you lose, you're out of the playoff. And I mean, they've obviously dropped so far that they're not even considered. But um, it's going to definitely the college playoff uh, this year is going to be interesting for football. I do think you're probably going to see uh, a dog growling in the background. Uh, <laughs> she grumbles. She yes, grumbles we got, a lot. We have a grumble pup in the room with us. But no, I definitely think you'll see a double up on. Uh, well, I don't know. You might not, but I, I thought at the beginning of the season you were going to see a double up from like the conferences. I don't necessarily know if it was going to be too SEC, but at this point it may, might be. But I honestly think that if that happens two years in a row, uh, that you'll see an expansion at least to six, like with the play in, like a first like a first round buy sort you know. of thing, if not eight within the next like four or five years. I, I kind of agree. I would almost like to see an eight. But I could see a six game, and then there's a one play in. Yeah. yeah, I could see that. We think um, they ought to just say screw it and make it a field of sixty four, like the NCAA sort of well. <laughs> There'd be so many dead college players. <laughs> they would be maimed for life. Yeah, if you think concussions are bad, yeah, that this would just be, kid's... That would just be the whole season. <laughs> um, 
They but, did 64 of them. <laughs> but, I mean... Four regular season games that make the rest of the tournament. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's... Uh, so, for my in-state uh, winners and losers, uh, the winner I had was uh, Louisville. But, okay. Because uh, Jeff Brown's looking real good. Yeah. And, uh, because of all the rumors, uh, the loss that I had in-state was by Petrino, because Jeff Brown looks so darn good. And that's that was my thinking as well, because I put Bobby Petrino as the loser, because not because of what happened on the field, but because what happened kind of yesterday morning, yep. and we're not verifying or denying anything, because we don't know if anything's yep. true at we'll this point. We'll be very, very clear that, they, that all the rumors that are currently swirling around by Petrino... Except for that he puts toilet paper on the wrong way, because yeah. that is verified. But that all the other rumors, <laughs> we're kidding, obviously, uh, about him, the ones that are kind of serious allegations, are completely unsubstantiated at this point. We're not saying they happened or didn't, but we can't say for certain. But, but the thing is, I know we have to say that because the resident lawyer here says we do, but because we if you we weren't in that position, this would not even be a talking point. No, probably not. Well, the, I don't know. His history makes it. His, kinda, his history does make it a point, but... Here's my thing. If he was hard. if he was losing, it, the rumor mills wouldn't be spreading as much. You mean winning? Winning, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's I what I mean. You. If he yeah. was winning, the rumor mills wouldn't be spreading because he he's doing a, so well. He'd have a lot more of the Louisville fan base going to bat for him, as right now they are not. You put any stock yeah, like on, Jay? Yeah, if this would have happened when Lamar Jackson was still there, even, I mean, probably would have just gotten completely blown over. Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, okay, Jared. Hold on one second. We're going to call Jared right back because I'm not liking the quality on that call. Because those, those it's really st- staticky. Those Let's silly see. Franklin, Kentucky internet. Now that, jeez. Junky I'm, Wi-Fi. He's definitely got to have like a satellite attached like a goat or something, right? <laughs> yes. That's it's Franklin, so who knows? Somebody could have stole his Wi-Fi. I don't know. <laughs> Jared, can you hear me, buddy? Buzz it. Stinking. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay. This is fun. Jared, can you hear me now? Yes. Good. Great. There Woo. we go. Sorry, it was coming back really bad, and I wanted to make sure what you sound good. It sounded like you had Parkinson's. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was It was really shaky. Um, so, uh, Jared, what? Do you, how are you on the Bobby Petrino rumor mill? I mean, at this point, I think it could be like the smallest of infractions that Louisville would just swarm to to try to get him out of there. To that way, they don't have to pay his bound at this point. But Jaywalking. I mean, only time will tell if all of this stuff is true. If it is, then oh boy. But if not, I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see if all of this, if it's not true, like what's going to happen, or if they're going to steep, kill, if people will try to find stuff on them, or just kind of look like oh maybe we'll just pay his vow or anything like that. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But now, weren't there really dumb rumors last year about Mark Stoops as well? Like, it, like I, I heard some. I heard about that. They were talking about it on the radio about how, you know, yes, there are rumors, and because of things that have transpired in Bobby's past for how he's behaved, that it makes a lot of noise. But that Mark Stoops, who doesn't have any blemishes on his record, also had some of these rumors. Some disgruntled like person said something, and they were completely false, never proven. Yeah, uh, and uh, you may be correct in that. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I don't remember what I had for breakfast. But um, here, the here. truth is, is even Cal not has rumors, but you have fans that are that'll complain, mm-hmm. and it's like you know they complain about the one and dones. They complain about what he's done. Yada yada yada, and it's like, come on, dude, just chill. He's doing. He's a winning program here, and he's probably one of the longest tenured SEC coaches right now uh, to be around. But but if that sort of thing had happened when uh, Billy G was there, oh then you gosh, know yes. it would have exploded. Oh I mean, yes, we we knew. You know, there was Billy. Bless his heart. <laughs> Billy G running was the best thing I yeah, think I've ever heard in my heart. life. Um, but Jared, did you have in-state winners and losers? Did I already ask you that. Uh, for in-state, I mean. I kind of agree with you. I mean, given Bobby P the loss for sure, but Louisville the win with Brom doing good. I mean, that definitely checks out because obviously Western is not a winner in any aspect unless losing was actually a sport that you could win at. But sadly, we it's kind of great not. that. Yeah, as sad as that is. <laughs> yeah, it was really sad. Um, I think metaphorically, Louisville is looking at Jeff Brom like the other woman. It's always yeah. greener, right? Yes, it's got to be. <laughs> 
that all of us WKU people are looking at. Jeff, come back. We need <laughs> you. <laughs> we miss you so much. You're so yeah, pretty. At this point, I'm just tired. I'm the field and everything after that Purdue win for Ohio State brought back the memories of my senior year rushing the field with Western after we won the first Conference USA title. Yeah, I did uh, that too. <laughs> good times. Except I was not a student there. <laughs> yeah, you were, according to your ID. <laughs> Um, of course, the Tops lose to ODU in probably one of the craziest losses I've seen in my lifetime. I've okay. never People seen. People can say what they want about Sanford, but this man knows how to lose in the most spectacular ways I think I've ever seen. He has gotten us, but to be fair, he's gotten us on Sports Center more in the last two seasons. One with the falling last year. You guys remember that debacle? <laughs> yeah. And then. Oh. Yeah, right? That was on Sports Center, and it was a great gaffe. And then this Don't forget year, the FIU this, punt. And the FIU punt. <laughs> thanks, Jared. I had forgot about that. I had blacked that I out. I don't see. I don't see how you can forget that because wasn't that on the Towerx article the other day, Jared? Oh yeah, it was. Oh my gosh! And that's just that was just digging into a sore wound. Um, but with Sanford, oh my gosh, craziest thing I've ever seen: two untimed attempts. And my thing is, did did nobody learn from the Iron Bowl a few years back? Right. First thought on that second kick. Okay, now. Um, the guy's name is, let me, sorry, I, I hate doing this. His name was Mason, number 77. Is it Mason Flock, is that right? I can't remember. I looked him up the other night, because I was, and I put him in the the recap. Uh, but he was uh, the player who did the face mask, and I don't blame that kid at all. For doing the face mask? It was accidental. He's, it's number yeah, 77, that so. Happens. Yeah, so he's not in that position. He's not doing tackling drills every day. He's just trying to do his job and get Stop. the kid out of bounds. Um, my thing is, if you're doing that field goal, shouldn't you have linebackers, uh, DBs on the edge, or wide receivers on the edge, quick dudes out there to catch Isaiah Harper, who has run completely over us the entire game? You would think. It's my thought, but... Uh, and yeah, Sam wrote a really good article on, yes. uh, like, how it wasn't Sanford's fault, um, and he made compelling arguments I, in there. Um, as I said in, in like a comment from our from our Twitter, the first one, absolutely, yeah, you get that because he had a thirty mile an hour back wind, all that stuff. That, that makes sense. That is, I yes. totally get it. But when you don't have the leg in it the first time, supposedly he's making fifty and sixty yard field goals in practice. But then he, he did supposedly, he, but he did. I don't think ha- any WKU kicker has been capable about capable of that. I don't even know if Schwedman had that kind of range. He never had that kind of range. He was at within thirty eight to like thirty eight to forty two. He was a laser. I mean, he still is our highest point scorer of all time. Yeah, but he never had that kind of leg, like actual boot under it. And this kid, when he kicked, right, they said, okay, he's got all this stuff. Da, da, da. Okay, but it still is short. Yeah. It still like bounces out. Yeah. Okay, fine. You allow it to do it again. What makes you think that you're five yards are... closer though? I'll give you five yards, ten yards, fifteen yards. I would have been like, yeah, go for the kick. You got to do it again. My question is, before that, first off, we're fourth and two in first or second quarter, and we went for it. Why not just kick the field goal there? In theory, if we had kicked the field goal there, got it. We're up by three the entire game. Yeah. If everything else fell into place, and then Which that last sure play didn't, have. Ha- well, <laughs> and I'm talking theoretically yeah, here, yeah, we would have been up by three, so it wouldn't even been an issue. They would have been the ones having to try and kick a field goal or go for the score. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Sanford's trying to be too much of a hero with some of these fourth down calls. I mean, I know it's a good thing to believe in your team is capable of doing such a thing, but I mean, sometimes you just got to take the easy points and pray that your defense does something big instead of just kind of being really risky like that. I mean, Jared, do you think it's kind of like signs of desperation at this point? He's just, like, grasping at straws trying to save his job? Basically. I mean, honestly, just trying to get some big play or anything that could be, like, a big momentum swing to try to actually help them get over the hill and win like, a game. See, I, I don't it's, it's think still that. still not working. I don't think that, and the reason I say that, not to cut you off, Jared, mm-hmm. is I feel like it would be like me playing Madden and I'm like, fourth and two? No, I'm going for it. And then I don't get it, and then I just turn it off and reset. <laughs> See, that's the advantage I have. Your opponent has left the match. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course I'm old, so I, I have to reset it. I have to do the PS2 reset. Yeah, so. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, it was just it was crazy. First off, why did, why did we do a run with LaFrance? Theoretically, in that situation, you have your receivers run outs, and then you you literally take off one to two seconds per play. 
They could do an out, you throw it to them, they're out of bounds. Boom. Next one, out of bounds. Boom. That's 15 and to 20 got, yards and right there. An so yeah, and you get an incomplete. Yeah, and he ran the ball, and I'm like, what is the call here? You know, I just don't understand that. Well, because um, he doesn't know how to call passing plays. Evidently. I love it when stuff comes through when we're talking. Well, that's what you get for having... <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for not updating your Windows Defender, Dad. Apparently. Um, okay, so, Jared, uh, yes. as far as Sam's article, what do you think? I mean, I kind of understand his logic for the first part of it, but there is no reason they should have tried that second kick because it was pretty bad, the first one. I mean, even if you get a second attempt, he could have maybe put a little more leg into it, but, I mean, still, I don't think that would have done anything at all, no. I think you have to go for the field goal there. You don't take it into overtime. Um, I know people are joking, saying Sanford never won- has never lost an overtime game. <laughs> Still true. But he's only played one. And uh, suppose and Sanford, being the Oedipus of the foot with the football gods, yeah. is cursed by not winning. Apparently, um, so I just I don't know. I, you have to go for it because of the fan base, but at the same time, it's like you got to stop them. You got to stop Isaiah Harper after it. I mean, I definitely, I can see both sides, right? I think if you can't put the leg in it, and you don't want to go into overtime, I mean, we had them run it back till the seventeen, anyways. Yeah. Bomb it, see what happens. Could go for the fake field goal there. Something. That would be the biggest yeah, play something. ever if you make it. And then we would watch that, and it would end up on Sports Center again. <laughs> right, <laughs> well, and that's what I was, and that's what I was about to get at. Was at this point. And this is this is like just coming. As I hate. I'm never defend. I never defend Sanford, but I do get it. Like at this point, so like you said, like going for it on fourth down, right? Not taking the points. If he'd went for it and gotten it, and that had ended up in a score, right? Then people would have been like, "Oh yeah, he's got balls." Rah, 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 rah. At this point, he's lost so much and has so little capital left with the fans that anything he does, if it doesn't work, he's host. He absolutely is host. Yeah, and and, I- and, and I'm not saying that. We should treat him with kid gloves because I definitely do not. But it's his fault he's in the situation. But I do get now, like, that other side of it that if he takes a chance, if he does something that might not be the most strategically sound, yeah. if he, you know, it's, cra- it, it's crazy, but maybe if it works, it's fine. It's more kindling, really. I mean, it's more yeah, firewood it to say. For, you know, it's like, well, he didn't go for it on fourth and two. Throw that in the wood pile. Yeah, he's a sissy. He's, yeah. he's, he doesn't have balls. Yeah. yeah that kind of thing. He's blonde. Throw it on there. You know, <laughs> you're just like, what else? He loves his skateboard. Um, well, I'm not really going to preview FIU. I just want to talk about how we're going to lose this game. <laughs> right. <laughs> In the most spectacular fashion possible. Yes. We're going to look fantastic. It was like suck for luck. Like, what What? What do we have I will, to just be trash? I will say, as awesome as it is that they're doing the W helmets this week. Well, wouldn't it be better if we were in the positive in the wing call? I know, right? It's just like, can we just skip this? Jerry, do you like the wing Ws? Yeah, I think it looks really nice. It'll be interesting to see what the actual uniform combo looks like with it, but it'll be nice. But if it translates to wins, I think you got to keep it for the rest of the season. Agreed. If it doesn't, then, I mean, what else is new? Yeah, try something else. Now, see, um, my thing is with the W's, they need to have that kid that does the paint commercial on uh, on uh, ESPN Plus for Western. He needs the paint every helmet. Yes. And then they need to film it and just have that brush go by. Yes, I agree. I agree. We made fun of that commercial so much in the Ball State game. They're like, why is he... Yeah, we, yeah, the game we watched together, yeah. which we, I think we need to do that because yeah, we, we won. That's, so. that's true. It's all our fault, Devin. <laughs> well, this week this week the game is on the BN Network, is that oh, right? God. yeah. And it's awful. Um, of course, I don't have it, so I'm not even going to try. Um, some quick stats. Uh, the quarterback for FIU, Jay Morgan... Uh, from Morgan and Morgan is he's thrown fifteen hundred ninety seven yards, sixteen TDs, four interceptions this year. So, if he throws four touchdowns on Saturday, we can look for an interception. If we go by the averages, positives, <laughs> positives. If he hangs twenty eight on us, we'll yes. at least have one pick. Yes, exactly. Uh, another positive: Shanley has got to the start. There is it's no about, or about time. I mean, amen. Uh, they should just stick with somebody, for the love uh, of God. Completely agree. Um, according to the stats that I've got, it looks like FIU is, they throw the ball as much as Western per game, per average. Interesting. Um, that was an God. excellent dog burp. 
That was totally the dogs. That was a creep. Yeah, that was the dogs. <clears throat> He's, Jared's over here clapping. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. Uh, rushing yards, uh, they actually do about 173 yards a game, where we're about 119. I don't know how we got to that many. But we're over 100 yards a game Miracle. this year. So that's another positive. I guess we can pull off the wood pile for Sanford. That's true. Um, we're going to lose this game. <laughs> uh, let's not kid ourselves. Um, I was surprised I'm, we opened up as only a three and a half point dog. Well, it's like, is it up to five now? Is it? I don't know. I, I saw think. earlier today it was three and a half. It might be five by now. I just think it's funny because you, you can tell like Vegas isn't paying attention at all. Yeah, um, and you only, and don't you get three and a half just by being you, home team? Typically, it's three for being. Yeah, home so, so there's a half a point there. It's pretty much a pick. I. I agree. Dude, yeah, we're at the bottom right now. I think, actually sitting there looking at the stats today, I, I said we were going to lose the rest of the season, but I honestly think we might beat UTEP. Maybe. That's the only possible game I think we can get at this point. I agree. Uh, UAB so is cool. ruling the West, and that is... Have you seen their numbers? Yeah, didn't they just beat North Texas? Oh my god, they crushed North Texas. This is pretty wild. Um, I don't have the stats in front of me. Well, actually, I might here in a second. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I just when I was looking at like Conference USA, like how it did last week, because I was just depressed and not paying attention. Uh, I, I saw that some people had some big wins. I was like, oh man, UAB is rolling. Okay, I said crushed. They beat them twenty nine twenty one. So I wasn't crushed, but uh, I love yeah. when they win when you win by like eight points. That's such an odd number to win by. Yes, um, or when you get a safety because you're holding in the end zone. Ugh. Was that not? I, I I just as soon as I saw that, I went, dude, that is the most obvious hold in the history. I couldn't put Jake in a bigger headlock and get a holding call. <laughs> I mean, that's all it looked when I saw the replay. I went, are you kidding me? You're like, good. Ugh. <sighs> Jared, how are we going to lose, besides the most spectacular way? Give us one All right. I don't know if this will actually happen, but I feel like it's very possible. It's going to be a tie game, like always, fourth quarter. We're going to have the ball at the one-yard line, about to pound it in, like three seconds left in the game. Shane Lee's going to do a QB sneak, but fumble the ball, and it gets returned for 99 yards, and that's how the game will end. <laughs> you know, that would give us on SportsCenter again. Oh, gosh. Can we just become, like, the Cubs of... The Cubs of Sports Center. <laughs> of, of college football? Is that okay? Uh, the saddest thing in the history of last year. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I don't know. 0-20, um, whatever, was pretty bad. The only thing I wish would happen is that some girl would sleep with Sanford and do a selfie and put it on Twitter. Right. So we could toss him and not have to pay the buyout. <laughs> yeah. No, look, here's the deal. I, I said at the beginning of the season that the basement of this team was four and that the the, the ceiling was eight. And, and were we wrong? <laughs> not only were we terribly wrong, it can get much worse. But I also said, I said, look, I don't think WKU finds the money to pay him. No. Nope. However, that was prior, and I know that the donation also went to, because it went to football and didn't go yes. to volleyball and softball as well. Jared, are you missing any sports? Uh, I'm not entirely sure about it, that. It definitely went to other sports besides football, but football was included. Yeah, Jared agreed with that. If you, yeah, right, he confirmed. <laughs> he's got the he's got the thing in front of him. Uh, if all of that does not go to Sanford's buyout, <laughs> sorry, I've got AD <laughs> malpractice. Yeah, I, if it is at all possible, I do not know how that bequeathment worked. I do. I have not read that donation. Um, I know you can tie strings to it. But I have to tell you, if it was just, hey, football, here's $600,000, should you go? Yeah. You can find the other six. Here's my thing. Okay. Like we figured up, I think, I don't know if it was on the show or not, but anyway, um, the seats that basketball is getting, they're going to get like, what, $800,000 we like estimated. You, you call those the Sanford seats, yeah. Yeah, and those are going to be the Sanford seats. Plug that with the other one. And you're yeah, done. so you plug those, and then you take part of the money and you buy you buy Sanford out. Yeah, that's sorry. all that's got to happen. I, I think you have to pull the trigger. One win, even two, you got to pull the trigger. It's it's an epic meltdown. There's no improvement. Um, you're not going to have. Not, I, I know because Fletcher was talking about this on. I don't know. At one point, he was saying, you know, I mean, even for the conference USA championship the second time around, they had thirteen thousand stands. But yeah, that's true. It also cold and rainy, and in the middle of basketball season. Yeah. Uh, having uh, the last game at home, had, the ODU game had like what they announced thirteen thousand. Jerry, do you remember? They announced thirteen thousand, but yeah, I don't know. It was definitely not that. Well, see, I will say that WKU has done historically a pretty good job of the ticket sales to like actual reporting, mm-hmm. like what ninety three, ninety seven percent accurate according yeah, to the time. Yeah, it was like one of the most accurate yeah, in the country. We were like number three, um, but as far as people there in the second half, it definitely was more like 
three thousand probably. Well, my thing is, it, if you look at some of the pictures on Twitter and other places, it was bad. There was like nobody there. Now that could be partly them manipulating and making pictures of certain spots. But well, that it's like, and Ugh. a lot of the pictures that you see are not like kickoff. No. Or like five minutes after when everybody gets in, they're like throughout the game. And even though it was, you know, it was a good game up until the end, and there was kind of a lead and all this stuff, um, A, you know, students are going to leave and get drunk, which makes me sad, because that's what we always, we just got drunk there, because they sell beer, but whatever. Uh, And two, I just, I I know that Western fans leave, but at the same time, I do think this this will translate into lost revenue. I mean, I know my company has spent money with WKU for an ad deal. And we're definitely losing revenue on the football side, so they're, like, making up in comps on the basketball side. Um, which I won't say, get any details about that, but still, like, we put money into them, and that value is now lost. So they're going to have advertisers start pulling. They're going to have, uh, you know, seats aren't obviously aren't going to be in there as much. There's less concessions. You're talking less merchandise. I mean, it's a snowball effect. Yeah. And at what point, and I know this has been, like, a big, it's kind of a cliche they've said with Bob Petrino, but it's the same thing. At Western, it's like, okay, when can you afford not to fire him? When does that balance come out? Because if you don't sell anything next year, if season ticket sales drop off, all this stuff, if it all goes down the crapper, you're going to lose money. Here's the thing. If we were 3-3 three and three right now, if we were any other record besides 1-6, and six, I think you have a justification to say there's no reason for these people to leave. Yeah. These people look at this game and they say, we're 1-6 and six and ODU's up, peace out, I'm gone. Yeah. And they're not going to hang out. There's no reason for them to stay. Um, so I don't blame them because I know how it is leaving, trying to get out of Western after a football game. This park is um, up a hill. Yeah, it's no. Mess. That's what I do too. Though. <laughs> Just park up my chair and you get and go out the back end. That's what I do at every basketball game, and it's like so convenient. It's not like Western's got a huge campus. Yeah, I'm, and I, I'm not saying anything about that, but you know, it's I don't blame them for leaving though. And all the season ticket holders, they are in like the two parking structures, so that is right the there next to it, which is so frustrating too. But anyway, um, <laughs> the uh, like I said last week, financially, Todd Stewart's going to have to make the number crunch it and say, a, you know, as soon as the season's over we're going to make the call, or B, we'll give him another year, and next year we'll make the call. Yeah, my that's... question is how many lottery tickets did Todd Stewart buy yesterday? Oh, my God. A basket full. He bought about eight. <laughs> he bought, he bought about $400,000 worth yeah. of... <laughs> hey, if he bought one in Louisville, he won a mil, so he cleared six. Yeah. Which, by the way, that was crazy. The you, Louisville the, dude? Or no, the, I'm talking South about... South Carolina. I'm, yeah, well, South, somebody in South Carolina obviously won the... One point six billion. After everything, they're going to clear about five three. Billion. Five three. Five hundred. Well, I mean, 30. obviously five hundred and thirty million. Yeah. I realize that. About what they're going to clear? I didn't think they were going to get five hundred bucks, but <laughs> no, no, sorry, sorry, no, I didn't. Well, I thought you meant that, like maybe I meant like five point three million. No, no, no. I knew it was going to be. I, I thought they were going to get a lot more than that before tax. But. Well, because you take so it's one point six as an annuity yeah. paid for the rest of your life, or. The lump sum, which is significantly lower, and then taxes come out of it. Now, here's my question, and I don't know if you know this either, Jared. This is the randomness of our show. Um, Do you get paid weekly, or do you get paid monthly with that check? I have no idea. I assume it would be monthly, but I'm not entirely sure either. Okay, so, and of course, according to my wife, who's done the research, (laughs) um, you get paid over 20 years is the, quote, lifetime. Oh, okay. So you said five hundred some mil. Yeah, just say five five. We'll say okay. Well, I'm just going to say I'm just going to do a round number five hundred million. Yeah. Uh, crap! Hold on, twenty. I got to do some math in my head here, Math's guys. Two hundred and forty months. Okay, so five hundred. Didn't go to econ school. About about two hundred forty. Uh, you're looking at two mil a month. <laughs> that's not enough that's, to live on. Okay, that's, that's I'm just so saying. <laughs> You would have to have, everything would have to be so tight. You just, I mean, you'd be eating out of Campbell soup cans. You know, it's just awful. Um, but seriously, <laughs> though, the, how preposterous that amount of money is. <laughs> okay, so I heard this on another show earlier, and I don't care to do it again. Do you do it anonymously? 
Or do you, I don't oh, know. If I would you, totally do it anonymously. I wouldn't want anybody to know that I got it unless it was like family or something because I don't want all these people showing up at my doorstep. Like, hey, uh, you're my third cousin on uh, your dad's side, twice removed. Uh, yep. You owe me like a bunch of money, remember? Because then I would say, okay, so uh, <laughs> just take two steps to the left there. Yep, just keep stepping. So you're going to have like a Mr. Burns button until they just drop out? Release the hounds. <laughs> Release <Smithers>. the hounds. <laughs> Jake, you can't do that. You know the kind of lawyers that I can pay on $2 million a month. Well, here's my thing. Okay, so you got I got to hire the ghost of Johnny Cochran for that kind of You money. get $2 million a month. Here's my thing. If you, if you, I don't know if Kentucky lets you do it anonymously or not, but if if I'm getting it, I'm going to be like, um, I only want a million. I'm just going to lie. I'll do it anonymously <laughs> and just tell my family, I only want a million. And then, you know, I'll be like, okay... This is what I'm doing. I'm going to give you ten thousand. You're going to get ten thousand. You're going to get ten thousand. Yep. And then it's going to be like you know a month later you'd be like I'm sorry I'm all out of money. Yep. Sorry. You know. And then they'll be like oh and you you know you fly in with your helicopter the next time and they're like gold plated helicopter. <laughs> what the <laughs> like some Saudi prince. Oh, I'd totally like Goldfinger that and just be like the gold guy. <laughs> I'm Hello. gold. I love gold. <laughs> the blint, blint in a blunt. Smoke a pancake. But There's even no pleasing, if, you even know. if you do, yeah, love it. Even if you do anonymous, people's gonna know. They gonna know you. You've won something. You pull in with a Lambo, and they're like, "Hmm, what'd you do?" You know what's wild? I wouldn't even buy a Lambo. I think I just buy like a new Tundra. Yeah, I'd, buy, I'd probably buy a new vehicle or pay off my own vehicle or whatever. Yeah, but that'd be about that'd be about the only splurge. Yeah, I don't. If I don't need a lot, to be honest with you. I'd of course, travel a money bit. is no real object though. Then. And that's another thing I heard was, if you, I know we're going off on a complete tangent here, Eh, if you, (laughs) it's important, the super wealthy don't see fines or, or if you get in trouble, they don't see it as you getting in trouble, they see it as the price to do stuff. Yeah, it's just the cost of doing that. Yeah, so if you pull in a handicap spot and get a ticket, they're like, well, it's the cost of parking in a handicap spot. Yeah, that's just how much it costs to do that. That's just how much it costs to park here. And you're like... Yes, See, if I won the lottery, I would pull my car into the house, get as close as I can to, like, over by the student section and just sit on top of my car for the game. Yeah. I could see Todd like, walking over. What do you mean I can't park here? What? Go away and just throw a wad of hundreds at him. <laughs> Todd, do you want some of this money or not? You better let me park here. I could just see, can like. Can I park in spot? I could see Sanford walk over and, he, and he's like, hey, you can't do that. You throw the money at Todd and go, get him out of here. Okay, he's gone. <laughs> you take a squirt bottle, get out of here. <laughs> I'd be like Joel Embiid last night after Andre Drummond got ejected. That was classic. <laughs> get that man out of here. Yes. I have not watched a minute of the NBA so oh, far. I haven't man, either. It was a good game last night. I want to see the fight, though. I yeah, it does sound fight. good. It I love watching good. fights with sports. I do, too. Ba- baseball's probably the worst fights. Football comes in pretty close, but it usually ends up them swinging their helmets. Uh, and you basketball is... you just keep your helmet on? Yeah, which, yeah, that's the worst thing you could ever do is take your helmet off and start swinging it. Yeah. Because somebody's going to hit you with their head and then your, your helmet and then you're done. So, yeah. Okay, so let's get back on topic here. <laughs> I mean, we pretty much all know. We've said we're going to lose to FIU. It's going to be trash. Do you want to do a prediction of score? Uh, I'll say 45-20. What do you think, Jerry? I'm going to write that down. Give me 38-21. to 21. I definitely think that's feasible. See, it's 38 to 21. Okay, then I'm going to say... So, yeah. 41 to... I don't know, 17. I think we suck. Okay, so... For those of you who can't see, because this is obviously a podcast, um, Jake's awful, awful handwriting. I can make out US 20 is my thing. That's 45. I know it's 45 because I just said it, but it looks like a U. Put a foot on the four. <laughs> Screw you. At least I don't close in my fours like a sociopath. I do not close in my fours. I don't know fours. about you. Jerry, do you close in your fours? No, I do not. Okay, thank God, because when you're trying to read see, that... That's not a, see, that's not a closed in four. That's an open four. Yeah. The, ones that, the ones that I think are sociopaths are the eights. How do you make your eights? Is it a snowman or is it a uh, infinity on the side? Move. It's infinity on the side. Yep. Not it's an infinity, yeah. There, okay, we're in agreement. Okay, so good. That's, so we're not terrible humans. I think I just found the title to our podcast tonight. <laughs> what? You spit all over the podcast? Mark? No, no, no. I said I, fa- I think I found the title for our podcast tonight. <laughs> what? Uh, close in your four, you so, so <laughs> sociopath. <laughs> yeah, don't close your four. Leave it there open. There you go. Because then you can't tell if it's a nine. 
And the eights. The eights and always eights, kill me. Yeah. Okay. So basketball. Yes. Something positive. Positive for yeah. once. So did you go to Hysteria or were you out of town? I don't matter. Yes, Matt was I there. was at Hysteria. So let's uh, let's get your uh, reporter on the scene take of what you thought of Hysteria. Since apparently it's a prep rally, as I've been told. It is a pep rally. That's basically all it really is, because I think they've kind of watered it down to what it used to be, because they don't even do the freaking dunk competitions anymore, and oh. that's what makes me, like, really mad. I mean, sure, they do all these cool dunks and stuff just showing off during the actual scrimmage, but they made it, like, a legit dunk competition back when Harper was still here. But, I mean... A lot of schools still do the dunk competition. Do they, do they do a three-point shot or no? Well, they do this thing with some people from Rick Rowdy's, which is the new, like, student thing that you can be in to get kind of really close with the basketball team. Just, like, the crazy people in the student section or whatever. It used to be just the Red Wave, and now it's Rick Rowdy's. I think, but I'm pretty sure that they, Matt is a life member. They people through that, <laughs> and uh, they would do, like, the layup, the free throw, three-point challenge, and then half court. There was a guy that made a half court shot. I did it on his first pizza, try. Which I really wish yes. that was me. Really wish that was me for multiple reasons, but I mean, I'm not bitter. <laughs> not bitter. Get better, Jamie. Not bitter. Yes, you'll have to start practicing half court shots. I do have plenty of embarrassing stories from halftime entertainment that I was in basketball games, but that's a different tangent. <laughs> yeah, right. we're gonna get to that one. Night. We will. Yeah, we'll have to definitely talk. So, about did that. you see any of the open scrimmage? Yeah, I did. Uh, the lady tops are definitely like bigger as a whole, which is going to be a lot better for sure. I mean, all the young players that they have look really good. Creech looked really good. Uh, I think they'll be pretty solid. New head coach and everything. It'll be interesting to see how he does. I mean, I, I think he'll do pretty good. But, I mean, with the guys, I mean, it's kind of what I expected. But the thing that probably surprised me the most was just how good Charles Bassey is at three-pointers. Like, I mean, this man looked like a freaking guard out there as far as how comfortable he looks, just draining them, like, one after another. It was like a consistent three-point shot. And I'm just like, how is this person a human being? Because he clearly does not look like one right now. So, is Charles Bassey a one-and-done then? Oh yeah, you think so? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's, no he's, he's, he, so right now, um, the most recent one that I saw, like mock draft, yeah, 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 mock yeah. drafts or whatever. Uh, yeah, you can't buy it, but yeah, go but ahead. he was like going fifth. That's great. Yeah, he's, he's I'll take that. He's every bit of a top fifteen. I am fine with him being the quote uh, John Wall, Anthony Davis of Western, and being that first one and done. Yep. And then we just get on, just keep going. You know, I'm fine with building off of that. Dude, mm. just I'm just sitting here thinking of a of a seven footer who is as much of a man in the paint, being able to shoot, even if it's like thirty four percent from three. Like, what do you do with that as a coach on defense? Like, oh, oh Charles Bassey's going outside. Should do we do we bring a big guy? I don't, you got to cover him. Yeah. What, what do I do? It's just okay. Fine. Let him take three. But Ooh. see, like the way that he plays, this may like be like, oh wow, I can't believe you just said that. But I mean, he looks a lot like Giannis Antetokounmpo. I mean, he looks a lot wow. like the Greek freak as far as like his length, his height, his weight, and just the way that he plays. I mean, he could play the three if he really wanted to. But I mean, obviously, <laughs> Stansberry is going to keep him at the five because that's what they need him for, keeping him on the glass and stuff. But in the NBA, I wouldn't be surprised to see him play the four and probably maybe even the three at some team because I think he's that kind of caliber of a player at least can get to that now how fast is he uh well I mean he still has that brace on his knee so he's a little bit yeah, more limited true. than he probably usually is but a little gimpy yeah just a little yeah, yeah I mean not as fast as on a on Tsukupo or anything like that but I mean still it's just, pretty mobile it's, it's just one of those things like when I, when I saw kind of the final stat lines from the scrimmage and kind of what everybody was talking about it's like dude this guy it's just they're not ready for this kid. Like I'm, they're just, I'm excited. They're now. just not. It, the entire Comfort USA needs to be on notice. Uh, yeah. Apparently, they are because we were voted number one uh, preseason poll. It was funny that he wasn't on the conference like preseason team though. <laughs> Yeah. I think that's going to be a mistake. I would. Yeah, hey, we also didn't receive any votes in the AP preseason poll either. Marshall got one, but we didn't get any. Dude, I'm here to tell See, you. See, Sir, Sir Charles Bassey, that's your new nickname, Sir Charles. Um, yep. Take notice because you need to be mad because you weren't put on the uh, Conference USA team. Yeah, you absolutely. should just be frustrated. And if I'm Rick Stansberry, going back to him shooting threes, I'm setting up a play where a three or four sets a screen for him and lets him go out on a wing and take a shot. Too, especially if he's feeling it one game. I know, right? Just hey, well, we did that with Justin Johnson at Old Dominion last year. Like he just was, he dropped like thirty some points, and the majority of them were threes. And I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, cool. hey, I'm You're fine with it, bro. That's a great trump card. Just and I mean, 
that's even better for him in a game because that adds more stock to his to him. And teams are going to be like, well, yeah. And then being able to put that on a wall because that would go on one wall yeah. in Western. Yeah, Charles Bassey, number five overall pick in the yeah, NBA yeah, draft, twenty eighteen. Yeah. I'm taking that. That's awesome. Yeah. And also during the open scrimmage. This surprised me the most, but I wasn't able to go to it. But I mean, Hollingsworth and Bassey both had thirty points. Yeah, that's each. wild. Like is, that's insane on itself. But also, Mustafa Jung got freaking six of nine from downtown shooting and had twenty three points. So this man now has a three point shot too. So basically, all of our bigs are going to be athletic enough to actually take some shots from the outside, which is hard to believe. Yeah, that was actually what I was going to say was the most surprising thing that ever that I took away was. Like, oh, God, Moo, what have you been doing in the offseason? Literally okay. just shooting threes. So I have to comment. Show them that they get to eat all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah there you right. go. Um, so I do have to comment. I just clicked uh, update on Twitter. WKU Football has just posted that uh, they have they had three sacks last week against ODU, but the FIU team uh, has given up only six all year. So basically out of, what is it, what are we up to, seven games? Like we, yeah, it's eight games. Seven, eight games. Yeah. I don't know if they've had a bye. Um, yeah, they've had six, so that's like one a game. We are in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I love that the tagline on that Twitter post is, our defense will be prepared for the challenge. Yeah? To die? <laughs> yeah, to give them nine. Are like, you sure about that? Yeah, yeah <laughs> like to give them nine seconds each play to throw the ball. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't mean, what was it, 500 and some yards last week with ODU? My God. I don't know who's doing the grade out for Tower Rack this week, but that was ridiculous. Yeah, real bad. I'm, I'm, it's probably already been posted, hasn't it? Uh-huh. I, don't, yeah, I don't know. You're talking to the manager here, so. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But no, it is super duper exciting um, from the kind of the. Well, and there was actually one more thing I want to talk about about the open scrimmage that people had said was um, how aggressive the dudes were kind of on the defensive side of the ball mm-hmm. for like that on the floor. I mean, it's so cliche to say uh, they're scrappy or whatever. Anytime I hear a scrappy basketball player, I think. Five eight and white. Yeah, but well, that that's kind of the racist thing. It's like that's what you say. Racist. Yes, he's, he's got a high basketball IQ, so he's a small white kid. Is that yeah, what you're telling yeah, me? Exactly. Yeah, he's very wiry. Yeah, we get that from the league. Just so yeah, you know, yeah, everybody yeah. knows we we're big fans of the league. So that's scrappy right. firework. Yeah, um, yeah, firecracker, all the yeah. firecracker. Yeah, all the little uh, racial things. Yeah, yeah. This is describing <laughs> a white kid without being like, yeah, it's a little white kid. But no, I'm super excited about that, and just it just. I'm, I'm setting myself up for disappointment. I'm trying to keep no, my no, no, I'm no. trying to keep my expectations. Check. I actually want to go to the tournament. No, so let's go to the tournament. Positive Pete, not negative Nancy. Here, we're going to the tournament this year. We're going to will this into existence. Okay, Red Out Nation. Put it in the universe. Yes, we're putting this out into the universe. Rick, if you're listening, go <laughs> ahead and uh, let this happen. <laughs> That was my impression. So that Remember, impression this of... is our basketball team, not our football team. You shouldn't yes. have anything to be worried about. I, I know. And another just, positive I'm point so is that season tickets are almost sold out. Which is so awesome. That is awesome. I think Is that because football is doing so bad that people want honestly, a positive I, in their life? I think it's just hype. I honestly do because of because of the recruiting class, because of how well everything went last year. I mean, had several sellout games last year. I don't know what season tickets uh, looked like going into the season. I know they were close to selling out, but I don't think they quite got there. Um, I think they could. But, I mean, they're less than there was like less than a hundred now. That's exciting, though, even for for Western. <clears throat> yeah, I right. mean, you know, of course, you know, every big national team has problems selling out, but that's awesome. I'm com- I'm completely tickled. Yeah, I mean, the um, students yeah. still got to show up, and your like general like seating has to show up because the seating tickets aren't all of them. But that's a huge boom. With what Jared's telling, reporting, um, you've got Charles Bassey shooting threes, and all these other guys that are going out shooting threes. I'm like, that's exciting. It is. It absolutely is. I mean, and basketball has become more of a shooter's league than a dunker's league. Yeah, that's my, yeah, that's the best. I thought for a second that was that like. That just scared you to death. That was the greatest scary. thing. There was just this <laughs> giant sigh of, like, air coming out. It sounded like you were letting air out of a tire. No, no, no. The Okay, so behind the scenes here at my house, we are literally, like, what, 10 foot from the bathroom? Yeah. And my toilet that I fixed, I'm not a plumber, but I fixed it. It continually, it just randomly will just kick in, just, and then it just quits off. Just hisses at you. Like, yeah, it'll just hiss. Like there's a snake in your toilet. Yes, I'm going to have to call a priest and get them to bless it. Yeah. I know a couple, but I, I think I could get one. One for sure. He would definitely do it. Um, but anyway, uh, so I guess we'll go ahead and skip into our rankings for this week, which yes. are extremely exciting. Um All three of us are huge fans of Big Red. I think I've told my Big Red story on yes, here. Yes, you have, yes. Um, so I'm not going to repeat that, 
But we're going to rank our favorite non-Western, so no yep. big reds, yep. uh, mascot. Uh, let's let Jared go first since he's our guest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jared, go ahead and name your top five uh, non-Western mascots. All right. I mean, I had the four pretty solid, but as far as the five, uh, I mean, see, to me, the way I view things is that, honestly, all the other Division One mascots just don't really matter to me, like, in the <laughs> slightest. Because, I mean, Big Red is on such a tier above every single one of them that he makes them look just that irrelevant and basic, which I find incredible. Always. So you're, so I mean, you're in calling no other... order. I know what my number one is. I really like the St. Louis Billiken. Okay. It's very intriguing. It's slightly disturbing. Uh, but, I mean, you know what? It's it's a it's a mascot for sure. I mean, nobody really knows. Like, not many people knows what a Billiken really is anyways. But I would have that up there. I would have the Providence Friar. That's another interest one, interesting one, like the whole Catholicism thing, I think. And that thing looks really creepy as well. It's definitely creepy. It's yeah. pretty creepy. That, 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 would be my, that, that would be number two, I guess. But the number one, I have to completely go outside of Division One. I. I have to go to the NJCAA, Junior College, to Scottsdale Community College. The fighting artichokes. That's are right. The, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the goat outside of the grid, that is. But <laughs> that is the most interesting mascot, not just because it's literally a giant artichoke, but the story behind it is even funnier. I want you guys to get this. This is great. It says that in the early part of the college's history that there was some unrest or whatever with a lot of the students between the administration that they were funneling too much money into their uh, sports teams and not enough for like their basic academic stuff, which is kind of weak. I mean, whatever. whatever. But uh, (laughs) the student body was asked to vote on a new mascot and different school colors and stuff for the football team. So the majority of the students voted for the fighting artichokes (laughs) and chose the team colors as pink and white just as an embarrassment. That's like that's how mad that they were. Like, oh, screw you! We're gonna make our mascot an artichoke. We're gonna be a joke. And but of course, the administration's like, screw your democracy. We're not giving you that. So they kept the mascot that they had. But eventually, they got to have another election, and they were able to actually get Artie the artichoke to become their mascot. And since then, it's become like as beloved as Big Red is to us over there. And nice. I found that beautiful. That is that amazing. They, didn't, they were they invented it to be an embarrassment to their school, and it turned out to be like the icon of their school. I love that story. That is awesome, though. Um, and I think that's every school's gripe is that the school puts too much money into athletics and not enough into education. Um, but at the same time, athletics is advertising for your educational departments. Yeah, yeah it's free advertisement, basically. I mean, going to the NCAA tournament and stuff, you're getting all this national attention, people filling out brackets. I don't know what the actual number of people that fill out brackets is, but they're all going to see your school's name filling out a bracket. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So and, the, and the deeper and the more Cinderella story you get, Chicago Loyola, right there. I never knew the nun's name. I don't, don't remember it off the top of my head. Sister Jean. Sister, Sister Jean. Jean. Yes, Sister Jean is the greatest story ever. And by the way, greatest Twitter, fake Twitter I've ever Sister seen. Sister Jean, that was um, so good. Shannon the Dude from Louisville is awesome as far as that goes. Uh, Jake, you want to take yours? Yeah, so I have some. <clears throat> I don't think. I think one of mine is Division One. Like one. <laughs> Uh, so first you have the Gooey Ducks. The Gooey Ducks. The Fighting yeah. Gooey Ducks of Everdeen State College. I have or Evergreen State College. No clue where it is. Has to be, I think, West Coast, because that's where these things are. Do you know what a Gooey Duck is? I have no idea what a Gooey it's Duck is. It's a giant, is. gnarly, like, schlong-looking uh, clam. Okay. That's what it is. Okay. It's like, an, it's like a clam that has this long like, piece See, of meat hanging out of it. me as the fat kid is thinking that was some kind of dish. Yeah, I was well, like, they do eat them. I was, they, yeah. they, they are, okay. they are a, a delicacy <laughs> in the Eastern world, whatever. It's, it's, the grosser it is, the more delicacy it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the gooey ducks. Um, weird colors, like green and stuff. It looks like a Pokemon. It's crazy. Okay. Uh, the next one is Keggy the Keg. Okay. Now, also, some of these aren't the official mascots. They're just, like, the ones the students have, like, built, and it's, like, theirs. So Dartmouth doesn't have an official mascot. Okay. So the students came up with it, and it's Keggy the Keg, and he's literally just a keg of beer. And they have a full suit that goes to all the games. It's awesome. That is almost as bad as Murray's fake mascot a few weeks <laughs> back, that was good. where the dude bought it from Amazon. <laughs> that was pretty funny, yes. And so this one, like, they, it, it's metal and stuff. Like, it's it's awesome looking. Leave it to the nerds at Dartmouth to build yes. something cool. 
Uh, then I've got the University of California Santa Cruz Banana Slugs. Yeah, I've heard of the Banana Slugs. That's, 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 pretty, that's pretty popular That's one. pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Um, there's one Aberdeen College in Washington has Charlie the Choker. <laughs> and it, it is... so. I, it, and Jerry, you probably saw this because if you're thinking about the... if you're Because uh, if you saw my number one, it was probably on the same list. That's the one that's coming up. But Charlie the Choker is just this big, buff, like Indian, like Native American-looking dude. But he's got like a rope. It's the most his neck. racist now, thing it's I've not, ever heard. It's not like a noose. It's supposed to be like a choker yeah, necklace. Yeah. But it legit looks like they're like hanging Indian in effigy, and it is so funny <laughs> that that still exists. I just they get mad about the Cleveland Indians, but they don't get mad about well, Charlie like the seven, Choker. There's like 17 people that know who Charlie the Choker is. That's so, true. Like, Until now, <laughs> now there are right. more. Now there's a bunch more. Go get them, uh, and and leave Chief Wahoo alone. Dave. Yes. Um, and finally, my favorite one, it could be no other, is from the Rhode Island School of Design, <laughs> Scrody. Scrody, yes. Scrody and is a giant... Y- yes, we'll just leave it to your imagination. Yeah. It, it, so that we can keep our G our, rating okay, here on yes. iTunes, uh, we'll keep it that way. Let's just say that the rounder parts of Scrody yeah. happen to be the color blue, Yep. Yeah. and the rest of him, the vertical part, happens to be veiny and red. Yeah, like you would picture. It is exactly what the you would think. The only thing that I think is more funnier is that he has a Superman symbol across. He does have a his, Superman symbol for um, Scrody. Yes, shaft. Um, so. Yeah, chest. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yes, that's what. Yes. 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 So that's so, the Scrody. He's my favorite. He's the best. <laughs> and if him and Big Red get into a dance off on Sports Center, that would be great. Oh my God! What if Big Red put him in his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> that would be the worst thing I've ever heard. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, father's chair. Oh, oh, God. Turn your headphones down for that one, guys. Yes, please turn that off. Okay, so these are in no particular order. I do have a story with my last one. Um, okay, so my first one would be have to be the board, the uh, Georgia Bulldog. Okay, yeah, I like Ugga that. is uh, he's of course I love bulldogs, and uh, another one is uh, the fighting okra from Delta State. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, look it up because it's like you guys go fighting okra. Um, that would be a good fight between the artichoke and that. Tasty. Yes, yes. <laughs> Fry both, they're good. Yes. Um, and then, of course, I love TCU just because they're such underdogs. So the, the uh, Super Frog from TCU. It's a cool-looking mascot. It's he like is kind of cool. like cartoony looking. Yeah, kind of super villain-esque. Um, but with anime eyes. Yeah, with anime eyes. Uh, my number two, I guess, would be Chief Osceola from Florida State. Yes. you got to um, love that the dude, of course, they have permission from the Seminole Tribe. But he runs out on the rides out on the field mm-hmm. with the war spear or whatever you call it, whatever it is, and he stabs it into the field and he does this thing and he rides back and I'm like that is so awesome. That's Poor, pretty cool. Yeah, that's a, pretty cool. As a child, I grew up loving Bobby Bowden. Yep, which I still love the dude. He's awesome. Um, and I love Florida State. Of course, when he left, I kind of jumped off the bandwagon. But uh, and then of course my last one is Mike the LSU Tiger because because when Western played LSU back in the day. Um, when uh, Jared was uh, in middle school, uh, we... Uh, probably, to be honest. <laughs> probably I think was. I was in high school. Oh, my God. Dude, God, y'all make me old. Uh, <laughs> we, played, we played them in 2015. That was the, probably the most recent. That was the most year. recent. Okay. That was, that was my senior year. So, oh, my God. I feel so old. Okay. <laughs> so, it wasn't that time. It was the time before, um, Ooh, which I was... That. Yeah, you're right. Okay. See, that was probably 10, 10 or 11, maybe. Uh, I know Matt probably remembers, but anyway... You go on the field, Mike the Tiger has his own enclosure mm-hmm. at in Louisiana, at Louisiana State, LSU. Anyway, uh, he's got his own enclosure. They put the gate, or the cage, up to the opening. They open it. They don't coax him in. They don't force him in. Mm-hmm. They just let him decide if he wants to come in. So it, we're like, oh, this is awesome. The story's great. They bring him in. They circle the field. They park him right next to the visiting locker room as an <laughs> intimidation. I loved it because I love tigers. I think they're so cool. They are cool. So we, um, so of course I'm walking over and I'm making pictures. He's got a double uh, cage so that his claws can't get through and scratch somebody. Um, if you're at, stupid enough to get close. Yes, of course they wanted to make a picture of Big Red with Mike the Tiger, mm-hmm. and the handlers said absolutely not because it might freak him out. No, because Red incites Mike the Tiger. Oh, okay. Good so to know. they were like, "That's not going to happen." So the funny story is. And I know Matt remembers the guy. He was a defensive uh, line coach at Western. His name is Eric Mathis. He's still around somewhere. 
he was walking back and forth. Every time he would walk by, the tiger just eyed him up. <laughs> and then he would walk back by, and the tiger would just, I mean, you know, you got 70,000, 80,000 people in that stadium, and he's just eyeing up this six-foot, 200, 300-pound black dude. Well, he's a big Just snack. eyeing him up. And the funniest thing, I told him, I told I went up to the Coach Mathis because he was pretty cool. And, I, and he's intimidating, but he was cool. And I said, the tiger is eyeing you up every time you walk by. <laughs> and he says, he, without missing a beat, he goes, yeah, he probably thinks I'm a water buffalo. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, that is the greatest thing. But <laughs> He thinks I'm a water buffalo. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, he probably thinks I'm a water buffalo. And he just walks off. I don't know if tigers eat water buffalo. Tigers eat water buffalo? I don't know if there's water buffaloes in, in, in India or wherever they are. But, yes. Mike the Tiger is my top uh, non-Western uh, because nobody can beat Big Red. No one can beat Big Red. No. And I had, I had to explain to my little brother who's in college today, which he won't listen to this, So, but anyway, that um, Mike the Tiger, or not Mike the Tiger, Big Red is the spirit of Western. Him and his girlfriend yeah. are like, it's a blob. Who knows what it is? And I'm like, you shut your mouth when you're talking shut to your me. Shut your dirty mouth. <laughs> uh, so frustrating. Yeah, my dad was actually at the game that they, uh, Big Red made his debut, and I'm still really jealous about That's that. That's pretty wild. That is awesome. That's that was in uh, 72 ish, right? Yeah, somewhere around that. Somewhere he said 70s, that he's yeah. in like this giant box at half court, and then he came out of that or something like that. Yes, Santa Claus presented him. We did a piece I, I last year. That. Yeah, we'll have to do. We'll have to put the clip out there. Yeah, we should. Um, with uh, Big Red was a present from Santa Claus, and he was made. And that suit is hot. For people who don't know. It was just like carpet, the old one was. But the yeah. new one's basically carpet, too. Well, I mean, it's not true. really anything... Just a little more advanced carpet. But it's I still mean, probably hotter new love in there. Let me tell you. Of course, they would get it at the managers. Yeah, see, he's grumbling. Um, the, uh, the managers would get it, and then the athletics department would come get it. They'd dry clean it, make sure it's clean and everything for the next yeah. event. Um, but like I went back there, of course they were like, oh yeah, the, the suit's back there. So I went back there and I was going to mess with it. I was going to put it on, yeah. walk around in it, you know, be a goofball. Yeah. I pick up the suit and it's soaking wet oh. and I was, it, and it's sweat. Yeah. And I was like, uh, uh-uh. uh, nope, nope, nope. So the only thing I did, I put the gloves on and I put the top of the head on and I like popped around the corner, you know, just so <laughs> yeah. his head looked just like he was looking. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but yeah, love big red. Uh, he's the greatest ever. Yep. Yeah, I do want to say this too. Like, uh, I went to the NCAA Hall of Champions up in Indianapolis, where like the main NCAA headquarters is and everything. They have this really cool public exhibit with all these different college sports things, and there's an entire section of wall that's dedicated to Big Red, pretty much talking about yes. the history of yeah. it, and it also includes to recently the campaign that Western funded to get a new suit that raised over seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars, which is that, that's so cool to be able to go in there, like the epicenter of where the NCAA is located, and be able to. See like the history of your school's mascot that's really neat well yeah, yeah you went there to complain but yeah we got you yeah. you, you had to complain to the ncaa president yeah absolutely that's there right. you go <laughs> well KU's chosen son yes going to fight the yes. good fight jared ross is going to fight the good fight for us they don't uh, want none that's right that's right son <laughs> go get them see with your chest <laughs> See, I would go in there and ask for them to take the asterisk away with the Final Four seventy one team. Yes, because, I mean yes. now that's legal because you, that apparently now you can get an agent without exactly still be able to come back. So I mean, I agree, and that's kind of like with uh, criminal law and stuff like that, right? If something is changed, it. yeah, if it's changed, then the person can get out of uh, jail time if the law changes. Correct? Depends on the state, but yeah. well, it depends on yeah the laws in the state and everything. But yeah, uh, but yeah, Don't I completely agree. It depends. Yeah, this depends. That's what Bobby said, too. It depends. Yeah, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. It depends. Uh, so, yeah, that'll we'll kind of wrap it up here. Yeah, I think, Jared, do you have anything else uh, do you want to bring to the table? Anything burning on your brain today? Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us? Uh, the only thing. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, why don't you go ahead uh, with whatever you're going to say and then give us your uh, where people can see you and read uh, your stuff. No, I mean, I was just going to bring up the fact that a uh, week from yesterday, week from Tuesday, is going to be the Campbellsville game. First actual... Oh, we totally forgot about the Campbellsville game. Gosh, the because, yes. team. because I keep forgetting that Campbellsville is a thing. Yes. Exactly. And we Good both... Stan Sperry's alma mater. Yeah, yeah, he's a meat county boy. Yes, we he completely... Yes, we completely forgot about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I'm guessing uh, you're probably predicting a win. 
<laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Although three years ago they played us within like eight points or something, and that was the year I think we only got like sixteen wins. Yeah. But cool. I mean, this year I would look for Western to get at least a hundred points. I would hope. Unless I would they're just absolutely goofing around like they did at Hysteria. I mean, it should be a pretty easy W. I can easily see that though. I think Western could easily score a hundred points. I mean, from what you've said, I mean, I imagine these guys are just going to ball out and just have fun. Yeah, just nobody get hurt. It's the only thing. Just don't get hurt. Amen. Just don't get hurt. Sir Charles, yeah, don't get hurt. Right <laughs> yeah. There about three people who just do not get hurt. Uh, so, as always, you can check out uh, Jared Rosh Doucher on the Towel Rack. He is the manager and memeologist. Yeah. Absolutely. He does great work, uh, apparently, with Sanford and the last stand of the Mohicans at... Uh, Wherever that was that Custard did his last time. What is it? A little bit Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know it's a movie. I'm just, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, check Jared out there. The Tower Rack does great stuff. They do articles and uh, uh, pieces every day. Yeah, multiple. Multiple times, times a day, yeah. We've um, got that content train rolling right now. Yes. And uh, hopefully we'll get the credential train rolling for you, too. Yeah, I uh, I wouldn't count on that. <laughs> we will. Hey, I tell you what. If we get credentialed first, we'll credential y'all, too, okay? Yeah, right. We'll just kind of like. It's, it's like chain immigration. <laughs> yes. It's like chain credentialing. Yes. We'll just. Well, yeah, because I, I can speak for myself, and I know, Jake, we rarely make it down to Bowling Green for events, so yeah. we would be gladly give y'all. We'll be like, yeah, they're definitely part of the staff, of yeah, course. Go. Uh but that's all we've got. Uh, check out uh, our Twitter podcast, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we're on Apple, we're on Podbean. Yes, all the Podbean, podcasts. Stitcher, I think. Uh, I'm oh, pretty yeah, sure. Stitcher, yeah. yeah, put the Stitcher up there. Uh, but yeah, check us out there. And as always, go Tops. Go Tops. Oh. Go Tops. And pray for Houdini. And pray for Houdini the Goat. Yes. yes.